All right, hey everyone, Wonderbot here, and welcome to Industries of Titan. This is the early access on the Epic Games Store. I think it will be coming, to, in fact, I know it will be coming to Steam in one year from today, as per the usual. Anyway, so this is one of those games that I've been looking forward to for actually quite some time. I saw it at PAX West 2018. I wasn't actually even looking for Industries of Titan. I was actually looking for their other game because they're currently working on a really cool looking tactical mech fighter game but that's nowhere close to done uh as far as i know which is a bit of a shame because i actually i really want to play that it looks super good anywho so this is like one part economy simulator one part sort of tower defense you're like attacking enemies but enemies might be attacking you i don't exactly remember anyway so we're just going to do dynamic difficulty way it's intended to be played and we'll just figure this out we're going to do landfallers, one headquarters, five employees, five minerals, zero isotopes, 100 cred credits, 20 influence through by three territory. As the Titan gold rush ramped up, many startups and corporations from Earth, Mars, and the asteroid belt have scrambled to snap up rune-rich land and start their own urban businesses. The landfallers faction in the swirling leadership group, oh, is this swirling leadership, leaderless group of striving hopefuls from across the system. They're people who dreamed big and have probably tasted failure. They also share a common hyper-capitalist culture. Landfallers are motivated by their perilous position and the powerful rewards of success. Every once in a while, these ventures can be incredibly successful. A few are already on their way to becoming full-fledged factions on Titan. Will you be the one who leads them to, the, to system dominance? I like this art style. It's very simple and it looks nice. So, what do we got? Low risk, low risk grant. Normal resources, normal rocks, lakes, crevasses, rebel camps. High risk, high reward. Interesting. I probably want to do low risk land grant, grant and just figure it out. We could also a. We could also just turn this up like crazy and just go mad, madcap. Well, I guess what I would do, yeah, let's let's do low risk land grant for the time being and figure out what actually works for me, and then maybe try high risk high reward at a later date. So how much is this game? Interesting question. I don't entirely know. It just landed in my inbox as most things do. Uh, let's see. It is. We can double check. It's giving me the news. I don't need the news. I need the price, and the price is thirty bucks. Which I don't know. I. I feel like 30 bucks is a fairly reasonable price for a lot of, like, AA productions, but it does strike me as the kind of thing that, unless you're super passionate about what you see here today, I might recommend waiting until it's got a couple patches under its belt. If you saw in the main menu, they had a whole roadmap there of things to do uh, to add to the game, and it's kind of one of those where it's like, if you dive in now, it's probably still going to be fun, but it's definitely going to be limited. Uh, compared to what it will be f a year from now. Okay, so what's our corporation going to be named? Um, named? I don't know. Why is it naming my companies that always takes the longest and is the hardest? What is our corp name? Can I just... I could hit random. But these are boring. Shall... What is what is a name for my hyper-capitalist... Uh, pioneer industry that's absolutely going to be doomed for failure? I guess I could just call it doomed for failure. Dot investments. Is mostly scams. All right, <laughs> lunch ship. <laughs> Woo. This company is mostly a scam. Let's get going. 
<laughs> I don't. I am. I'm not here today. Which sucks a little bit because this seems like the kind of game that I might actually want to have some brain power for. But it's fine. It doesn't matter. I don't. I don't need it. I don't. I'll figure it out, or we just throw our face at the wall and see what sticks. I'm betting not my nose, that's way too small. Probably my forehead. Maybe my jaw. I got a nice jaw. If you ever wonder why when I'm doing character customization I give all my characters giant jaws, it's because... I don't know. Makes me feel like I'm part of things. Brain will start working part way through. We'll see. We will see. Brace Yourself Games presents... Industries of Titan. I really like the... Oh. The council is glad to see you. We have significant investments riding on your success. I hope you'll live up to our expectations. Welcome, Founder, to Industries of Titan Early Access. You may find plenty of what we like to call bugs, which the Council are eager to squash. If you stumble upon such a bug, we appreciate you reporting it on the forums or on our Discord. Thank you. The Council looks forward to seeing what you can do. Huh. That's neat. WASD, right button to move around. It's a slick tutorial, QE. Okay. I really, I really like these little tutorial things. Okay, so we've got pause, unpause, game speed. Oh, shift one, two, three. Okay, Welcome that makes sense. Honor. This works. My name is Shiaro Hess, and I am your corporation monitor. Every founder on Titan is assigned a monitor like me. I make sure you treat Titan with respect. It is the Council's property, after all. I also advise on resource extraction and ruin salvage. If we work together, we'll make this city very efficient. Okay, I'm going to very quickly go into the settings. Because the voiceover is actually pretty good. And I'm going to want to hear him. I'm going to turn everything up so we can hear him better. Then we'll have to turn things down accordingly, probably. Okay. Because I'm sure that's going to be too loud. Be in a hurry. Founder, please take a close look at your starting territory. The outline tiles adjacent to your headquarters belong to you. You are free to do as you please with this land. Any land outside your territory, however, belongs to the Council. If you wish to use that land, you will have to pay the Council with influence. Okay, so that's pollution levels, Founder, energy grid. I see you eyeing those ruins. Intriguing, aren't they? The ruins cover almost every inch of Titan. They're the wreckage of an earlier, more foolish age. The doomed settlers who built them left many resources and artifacts behind. Your territory already contains some ruined structures. You can survey them in your city view. Survey results will show you the contents of the ruins. Issuing a survey order will assign an employee to do it for you. Try surveying the ruins you control. I guess I will survey all of my runes. The, he said the doomed settlers. Like, it seems like they had a fairly considerable amount of things going on here. Like, these are not small buildings, necessarily. So whatever settlement was here before, they... They, uh... They had some stuff. Survey complete. Founder. Survey results have shown that some nearby ruins contain valuable resources. Resources are used to construct buildings and devices. Our city needs them to grow. 
Try salvaging one of the ruins to gather its resources now. The resources you find there will be placed in storage automatically, if there is storage available. Okay, how much storage do I know I, I have? Council? Communications, employees. Founder, you may be interested to learn that there are other secrets hidden inside the nearby ruins. They can contain artifacts, rare and valuable technology from before Titan's fall. When you select a ruin, you can choose to extract artifacts instead of salvaging it. But keep in mind, not all ruins contain artifacts. You must survey them first to make sure. Artifacts are very rare, so use them wisely. If you have many artifacts, you can always donate them to the Council. It will earn you quite a bit of influence. Okay, so I, I can spend influence to access these things. I think I... Okay, so I, I have already extracted artifacts from the runes. I, I'm going too fast and I might actually screw myself over a little bit. Okay, so we, we just have to keep surveying these until we find artifacts. Well, I might as well, seeing as we're still kind of in early tutorial mode, let's just survey almost every building nearby. It'll keep my people busy for a little while, but why not? Yeah, please follow the tutorial on this one. I... Yeah, I mean... Oh, I guess I guess I could have actually skipped... I can just skip this one. There we go. Survey complete. Survey. Oh, hey there, uh, Founder. Right, right. They told me you'd be checking in soon. I'm Vern Skull, your waste management officer. I think that title is pretty reductive, but yeah, I'm the one who moves the waste around. You make the trash, I move the trash. You dump the trash, I burn the trash. It's a beautiful partnership. And boy, you do have a lot of trash piling up around your city, don't you? No worries yet, though. We'll handle it later. Uh, but I would like storage. Storage would be lovely. Welcome to Titan, Founder. I am Anar Peer, your council representative. There are currently nine council members on Titan. Each of us sponsors and oversees different corporations on this moon. I am your sponsor. Your city permit and council funding are thanks to me. I hope you will return my faith with high profits. And remember, everything the Council has given you can easily be taken away. Founder, the Council has granted you a Headquarters facility. Enter your Headquarters by selecting it in your City View. I suggest you build some devices inside of your Headquarters. Every new city needs a few essential devices to operate smoothly. Okay, I was wondering how we build stuff Founder, outside. Founder, this headquarters is the best place to build the devices that will keep your city running. The first devices you need are storage containers to hold your minerals and isotopes. Build a storage container here in your headquarters. If you need more room, you can also build one inside a factory. I'm gonna go big. I like the fact that you can go inside these. You can either- you can also get a combat floor and some other things. Uh, hey, Founder. I got us a temporary solution to our waste problem. There's waste all over our city, but you can build a waste receptacle in your headquarters to store it. Your employees will automatically pick up the waste and 
place it into storage. Now, it's not a long-term solution, but it'll have to do for now. Besides, if the citizens can't see the waste, it might as well not be there, right? <laughs> Founder, we will soon run up against the borders of your territory. The city must expand. You can claim any parcel of land from the Council with influence. You can spend influence to acquire any plot of land in your city view, even if it is not connected to land you already own. But choose carefully. Not all ruins are equally profitable. Yeah, clearly, some of these are just waste. This one is amazing. Let's Founder, see. you may have noticed that there are several patches of resource-rich land near your territory. Surface-level minerals and isotopes require no special equipment to harvest. This makes them the best choice for a new city. You should claim this land from the Council as soon as possible. Founder, you now own a valuable patch of resources. It is time to harvest them. Select any patch of resources you own and assign an employee to work there. Your employee will obediently collect those resources until none remain. Hey, Founder! Thrilled to finally meet you! I'm Ayana Oak, your power systems engineer. I'll be managing your city's power systems. That means fuel, energy production, energy storage, all that great stuff. It's my passion, honestly. Since I was a kid, I've wanted nothing more than to slam the contact switch on a giga battery and see the sky light up. And after years of school, and grad school, and VR training programs, and <laughs> dropping out of VR training programs, I'm finally here! We'll do great stuff together, Founder. Trust me. My career is on the line, and you can count on me to take that seriously. It is amusing that I have a better microphone than these people, but I'm pretty sure hey, they did Founder, it intentionally. Uh, um, I checked inventory, and we don't have enough fuel. We need fuel to generate energy for our buildings and devices. Luckily, there's fuel all around us, in the air. Titan's air is so toxic, it contains many flammable substances we can burn for energy. So, build a fuel fabrication device in your headquarters, or in a factory. These devices don't require any external energy of their own, and they operate without employees. Very convenient. It's kind of Tetrisy. I'm just going big. I'm going future proof. I have a lot of resources, so I figure I might as well just go with the big, big things first. Let's see. So we know that's full. How much is that? Oh boy. This thing is almost maxed out already. Uh, no it's not. Capacity is at 94. So as long as we keep getting really expensive things, we'll be okay. Founder! We're on the road to fuel independence! Soon, we'll have more than we need. So we need fuel tanks. It's toxic, it's flammable. If we don't have a safe place to put excess fuel, we have to throw it out. Let's build some fuel tanks to store our excess fuel. Then we can build up a reserve. If our fabricators ever go offline, we can tap the reserve to power our city. One thing I'm noticing is we might want to plan for like main thoroughfares here. I'm noticing my guys have to actually physically bring it to the storage, and that'll be an issue. Okay, Founder. It's finally time to turn our fuel into energy. Most buildings and devices need an external source of energy in order to operate. 
Build an energy generator somewhere on empty floor space, in your headquarters or in a factory. The generator will convert fuel into energy. So this seems to be just a flat one to one to three ratio. So we will need more. So eventually we'll have to do pipes and a bunch of other things. But for now, this is okay. So let's get a battery in there. From generator or battery to another area. All right, the juice is flowing. It's time to send that energy out to the buildings and devices that need it. Energy doesn't travel on its own, huh, I wish. We need relays to carry the energy. Let's build some relays now. They'll power everything the grid touches. Just make sure that all the buildings and devices that need energy are connected to the grid and that the grid has an energy source. I don't think I'm gonna be able to put much inside my headquarters, so we're gonna need some factories for this. Oh. I've blocked off a quarter of my storage. Oh, so they actually have to reach these locations. Hey, Founder, energy is just like fuel. If we don't use it, it goes to waste. We need to build some battery devices to store extra energy. If our generators go offline, and I really hope that doesn't happen, then we're switching to battery backup. Oh, and just like generators, batteries must be connected to the energy grid if you want them to work. Okay, so let's skip that. We need to... We need to make a factory. Hey there, factory. you ever hooked up a building to an energy grid before? Your generators are producing energy, but they can't get it to the grid unless you build some industrial outlets. Build an industrial outlet somewhere inside your headquarters. Then connect your generators to it with an energy relay. Once the generators are hooked up to an industrial outlet, the grid outside can access the building's energy. You can also use industrial outlets to pass energy between different floors of the building. Once it's on the grid, this building can act as an energy source for other buildings in your city. And if you need energy to flow from the city to inside your buildings, it works the same way too. Build an industrial outlet inside your headquarters and it can be connected to the city energy grid. Okay, so I think I've done that. I'm gonna need a factory. Founder, it appears that you are running out of free space for devices. As your city grows, you will always need more floor space. If your headquarters has no more room, you can always build additional factories and install the devices there. If you are to power your factory with energy generated inside another building, you will want to build this new factory close by. I'm sure your power engineer will explain how to do this later. That is her department, after all. When construction is complete, you can enter the factory interior and customize it, just like your headquarters. Under your start, it's supposed to start with the small buildings. Go big or go home. This is Titan, not miniature. Excuse me. I will only build the biggest of buildings unless there's no feasible reason to use them. You have to go home then. You better go home. Haven't you heard? It kind of sucks outside. I went outside today and it sucked. I didn't like it. We went grocery shopping for the first time since this whole business started. We were there to pick stuff up, but we realized we had forgotten, like, one thing, which is sponges. And so we decided to go into the grocery store instead of, you know, just getting pickup. And the answer is, people are morons. I wasn't happy about it. Let's see, I got isotopes. Let's upgrade the HQ. I don't even know what upgrading the HQ does. Founder, our city is bursting at the seams. We need to grow. 
But if we want to grow our corporation, we'll need a real energy grid in this city. Energy works on a citywide grid, just like it works in our headquarters and factories. To get our city's energy grid online, build an energy pylon that connects your headquarters and factory. Make sure that your factory has an industrial outlet too, or else it can't receive power from the outside. Now here's the question. Does the energy pylon need to cover this factory? Or because this factory is close to the other one, does it just connect? Overlap the factory with a... Okay, so it does have to. Alright, let's go back out. This is a very small AoE. I'll take what I can get. Okay, so let's check this out. So this is the first floor, and now we have a second floor. Cool. Device complete. Uh, where do they come in? Oh, they come in here. I'm just going to get a second one of those for a second. It looks like there's also Burrow. Protects from attacks by temporary hi temporarily hiding buildings underground. Oh, I was just really hoping I could build stuff underground. Why can't I be mold people? Well, that's a bit of a shame. Okay, that should be it. There we go. That's a giant pylon. Founder, it seems that you've successfully constructed an energy system to serve your city. As well as fuel and energy storage in case of disaster. Bravo. However, your future population also needs to be stored adequately. I suggest you construct habitat pods inside your headquarters. You can set these pods up next to your factory equipment. Don't worry, your citizens won't mind. So this is where they come in, and that's the elevator. In that case... I'm just gonna do that. And we wanna get energy relay. I guess in retrospect, this was poor. Uh, let's cancel these real quick. We are going to need... Habitat pods. I'm going to do that. So we want to do energy relay here. I guess the other... The other alternative is, I could move the industrial outlet in here. Yeah, let's dismantle this one. I'm going to just move the industrial outlet to that location instead. Transfer of energy between energy relay devices inside the buildings, pylon outside. Okay. Yeah, so we're just going to we're just going to move this around. Cuz yeah, if I have it hooked up on on this side, it, it should work better. Device complete. 
Because, yeah, I figure I'm just going to use this factory as a de facto uh, apartment complex. All right, there we go. Space Station Operations, are you the replacement? Oh, uh, never mind. You're the new founder, right? I'm Erlan Fletch, your local spaceport operator, but you can call me Fletch. Have you been up here? No? The space station is, well, it's right above you. Council Operation, Low Level Orbit. Every few cycles, the Council arranges for a new set of trade ships to dock up here. They're carrying cargo and migrants, ready to head down to spaceports all over Titan's surface. You can find the spaceport in your city view. Hope you last longer than the last founder the Council sponsored. <laughs> Seriously, it's rough out here. Okay. Are we doing anything else? All right, Founder. So you probably noticed the spaceport is locked up. See, the council doesn't do things for free. You gotta pay to play around here. If you want access to those ships in the spaceport, first, you gotta trade a few artifacts. Yeah, I think it's ridiculous too. But don't tell anyone I said that. I, uh, need this job pretty bad. Fleeters, like me, can only work in zero-G. Wait, where the heck is the spaceport building? Oh, it's one of these. There it is. Yeah, the one that's off camera this entire time. Okay, unlock spaceport. There we go. Welcome to the spaceport, Founder. Here's where all the big moves happen on Titan. Now that you have access to the spaceport, you can see the ships headed toward Titan, full of cargo and migrants. You can buy what they're carrying with influence. This is your primary way of increasing your city's population. If you're getting migrants, make sure you have somewhere to house them. Otherwise, I can't send them down. Rules are rules. And uh, don't be surprised if they bring a lot of waste with them too. You'll just have to deal with it. So spend influence. We need a migrant ship. Probably the prison ship, New Life. Uh, let's see. We do have this one. It has two people on it. Greetings, Founder. So glad to finally meet you. I'm Lyle Visk, your Head of Human Assets. Everyone here in the Human Assets office has just been aching to get on a conference call with you. Our philosophy? Eliminate cost centers and build human efficiency. We transform people from a human resource into a monetary resource. Ah, yes! So you've decided to monetize your citizens. Excellent. They're going to need jobs. Lots of jobs. When citizens work, they earn credits. We harvest those credits by exposing them to high click-through video advertisements. <laughs> to begin, really... construct monetization stations inside your headquarters or factories. Once those devices are built, our citizens can start enjoying some fresh, exciting adverts. I... of course. Of course that's how this works. Ah, Founder! I've been meaning to talk to you about conversion capsules. It's where Titan's industries transform obedient citizens into even more obedient employees. We market the procedure as training, but the process is really more technical, and the effects are permanent. Once they've gone through conversion, your employees will be able to work basically forever, without breaks or sleep. Now, there may be some long-term consequences that medical science isn't currently aware of, but it is a voluntary process, so your conscience is clear. 
I'm just gonna All right, throw Founder. away some storage. Now that you've built your conversion capsule, you're ready to convert citizens into employees. Start by selecting one of your conversion capsules. This is where you'll pay for new employees. Give it a try now. Your citizens are very eager to sign up for conversion. This concerns me. I'm I'm sorry. We stuck them in a techno sarcophagus and are currently Did he just puke out his brain? By the way, founder, there's a limit to the number of employees you can have at any given time. But don't worry, we can increase that number if you start to find it limiting. Each conversion capsule allows for even more employee brains. If you want to increase your maximum controllable number of employees, simply build more conversion capsules. Oh, oh hey, uh, founder. Looks like you've been collecting a lot of waste. Waste comes from many places. It's often left behind when you salvage a ruin, for example. And, and us humans, well, we can't help it. Waste piles up everywhere we live. Converting people into employees makes waste too. Swapping guts for gears, there's stuff left over. Uh, you probably shouldn't leave that waste lying around. Uh, have your employees clean up after you. If your devices and buildings can't find a spot to put the waste, they'll start to turn off. Do we not have a means of dealing with this? Hello, Founder. Your employees are working hard, but are they working efficiently? You can use the employee management panel to choose which task they will complete first. Access the employee management panel, then drag and drop items in the task list in any order you please. They'll complete tasks in the list starting at the top and working toward the bottom. It's always a thrill to transform employees from aimless drones into focused, empowered laborers. Okay, so we've got a fair bit of space. We've got a fair number of things. We can absolutely get some more people. Tasks in the employee management panel in the top UI. This one, probably. I'll do that. Okay. So, Founder, you probably noticed that our waste problem is getting pretty serious. Well, no need to fear. Waste management is here, etc., etc. Our citizens and our factories are all producing waste. You could let the trash pile up, but it's better to get rid of it. Citizens prefer it when our buildings are clean. The uh, council likes it when we keep it tidy, too. The I guess from the YouTube side of th things, I might as well just say this. Uh, capture stopped for some reason, and uh, I guess we miss a little bit of dialogue, but I gotta, I gotta build a smokestack. I, I can't pause this game. Uh, by pressing escape, and so it took me a little bit to figure that out. I don't know. This is dumb. It's a bug because of the employee management. Okay, that's weird. You can find it in the city construction menu in the city view. So we want a smokestack. Removes waste by burning it, but that releases toxic gases. Generates pollution. Do we... Do we have an alternative? Guess we don't. Oh, but I need more mi minerals. Uh, I've got plenty of influence. Do I have a lot of credits? I do. But I don't have enough minerals. Let's 
start salva salvaging for some more. That doesn't really have much. This one has a lot. It's got isotopes and waste. This has a lot of minerals, isotopes. Some amount of waste. Should probably go back to surveying some of these along the way. Okay, here we go. Isn't the atmosphere absolutely toxic? I'm assuming it's slightly less harmful toxic. Uh, let's just salvage for a lot of these. Claim that. We're going to lose some influence here, but it's fine. Oh, and mines get rid of pollution too. All right. Well, let's learn how to make that. This shouldn't take too long. Okay, build the smokestack. I guess I'll put it next to the factory. I don't actually know how long it takes to move things from one spot to another. Uh, so we'll figure it out. It's a bad idea to put the pollution thing right next to where people live. True. Well, whatever. We'll figure it out. Nice part is this is early access, so I'm going to make all of the mistakes now as opposed to later. Let's see, new artifacts. A lot of these just have waste. That has some. A lot, actually. Uh, let's see, so this is Council Hall. Trade tickets over time. Space fighters over here. We don't really need the ex extra citizens, but maybe we want them. They're four for eight influence, sure. I can house them. So let's go back into this factory for a second. Only one person can work at a monetization system at a time. So we currently are going to have eight. Well, I guess let's go up to floor two. And start jamming in monetization stations. And then I can't make anything else because I'm apparently out of minerals. So what? how does a mine work? It looks like it's just faster than using employees. Alright, so this is fine. Employees are green and blue, so you think they're zombies. I... You know what? They kind of are, actually. Because... Oh, hello. I see, we need an employee to run this thing. We have no target. I don't think we have too much to worry about. Question is whether or not I actually want to put somebody in this. I'm going to say no. Let's go back to this. I'll leave the turret off for the time being. If I get attacked, we'll upgrade it. But yeah, apparently for the employees, well, their parts are replaced by... Now that you have a smokestack, you need someone to operate it. Select the smokestack and assign an employee. They'll automatically start burning any waste stored in the facility. Your other employees will make sure it's packed with things to burn. Once the waste becomes smog, it's not our problem anymore. Well, I mean, technically it still is our problem, but we just don't have to think about it for a while. Enjoy the air while you still can, Founder. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna have to uh Oh, next enemy attack in twenty three minutes. Alright, cool. Yeah, we're gonna have to make a power production factory. I could make a power, like a proper energy plant. I'm not really sure if it's worth it, though. It seems like it'd be better to just use nonstop factories instead. Set to zero, zero, but we just do not have the power. Okay, so we want to... This is just going to be power station. 
Okay, so I currently have one large ener energy generator. So let's get a fuel uh, fuel generator and a large energy. What do we want to... Let's see. Gonna put the energy relay there. And we're gonna need an industrial outlet. Unfortunately, we are a little desperate on minerals. Hopefully, we can get, like, turn waste into minerals at some point through an aggressive recycling program. But it somehow seems unlikely. But yeah, how's this going so far? It's good. It's definitely the kind of game that you absolutely have to play the tutorial to even, like, really get what you're supposed to do. And then once you do, it's not so bad. Let's see. So, is there a way to check? Global fuel usage is currently 6 out of 10. This would put it up to 9 out of 10. Okay, that should be perfect then. Oh, let's see. Super unfinished, but solid unfinished. Found a memory leak that put your RAM up to 13 gigs. Ouch. Uh, ouch? Okay. So we want to get some batteries up in here. This is just going to be super power station. I guess, you know what, we might as well be a little silly. Grab those, and probably a waste receptacle in here. Let's see. Be wary of employee job priorities if you use Game Capture. That's exactly what happened to me, actually, like, right before you show up. I touched it, it broke, so I've now switched over to, um, uh, just pure display capture instead. The music seems to have also stopped. Which is a bit of a shame. Alright, one way or another, though, we've got power, we've got a decent amount of energy storage, everything is good. There we go. Took longer than it needed to, but that's fine. So do All right, and at this point, this is a pretty good stopping point. I like this game. I like it a lot. I've got one more episode sitting around, but unfortunately, it's kind of one of those where this is a very, very early access game, and there's only so much content available to it. I like where they're going with it. I like a lot of the systems. I love the floors. I love the fact that you, connect, you can connect factories, uh, the power management, the resource gathering. A lot of it's pretty good. Main problem is it's a bit buggy. Uh, the the worker allocation gets really screwed up. Uh, you'll see that in the next episode. And uh, it, it gets a bit crashy, which is unfortunate. Because, yeah, it certainly kind of puts a damp dampener on, you know, wanting to play more of it. That said, this is one of the more promising, like, sandbox... I'm going to call this a town manager kind of things. This reminds me of the old Outpost games, but with a little bit more economy to it. And it's super promising. I, I love the visuals, the voice acting. The tutorial is actually probably one of the more interesting ones I've ever seen. Though, they really need to make you build that gun sooner, otherwise you get wrecked by rebels. Uh, but, like, I, I really cannot wait to see what they do with this game. Uh, it reminds me a lot of Flotsam, which I think I might have mentioned in this episode. But either way, I in terms of just, like... A well-designed survival sand sandbox town manager? I, I don't know. The the labels go on and on, but like I, I like what they're doing. It just is going to need a number of months to uh, to develop. So I guess I will say uh, they do have about... It's about a 12-month uh, roadmap going ahead for early access. I don't actually know if they're going to be able to keep to that, considering it seems like there's a lot that still needs to be done. Uh, but it'll be about 12 months, and then it'll go out on Steam. And my assumption is it'll probably go up on Steam after about a year. 
and then it'll stay in the early access for X number of months until it's done on both regards, and then then we're all good. Um, but so as far as recommending picking this game up, I've probably said this, but it's it's definitely one of those where it's worth grabbing if you want to support this game in its development and you want to help like shape where it goes because they've got an active Discord and forums and stuff. Uh, that said, if you're looking for like a new cool game to sink a bunch of time into, I'd wait. I'd wait for a while. There are enough problems with this one that it's not like an immediate play this now because that's that's monster train for me and this is this is very much early access in all regards. So I guess last things last I uh, I guess I will have a link in the description below if you do feel like picking this up. This is an affiliate link uh, for my. I, I guess for the epic storefront so if you do pick it up I get a small cut of that and it is very appreciated but it is not mandatory in any way shape or form and with that if you guys like this episode in any way shape or form leave me a like it helps more than you know and if you want to see more hit subscribe because I've got a little bit more industries of Titan and there will be more on the way once it's developed further and then I just have so many other interesting indie games to check out and with that thanks for watching I'll see you next time